But the thing that God has placed in me that I'm going to talk about today about this creator is the war that's going on. God's not fighting. God spoke to me one day and just said, do you know what would happen if I fought? What are we talking about? adamantbeliever.com forward slash creator dot p d f amen God does not fight the devil <laughs> look everybody like what okay let's just use up what would that fight look like what, what would that fight look like That would be Pinocchio fighting Geppetto. <laughs> Give me them screams. <laughs> so, but see, we do all of this talking, all this praying, and we just don't sort this stuff out. So we got to sort it out and understand what we're praying for when we're praying and talking to the creator of everything. Okay? God is not a created being so he doesn't fight with what he created he doesn't fight what he created because he's not a created being a created being would fight with a created being but a being that hasn't been created that's not a fight with what he created are y'all getting it Oh, we going to get it. He may fight with us and through us. So we're on, he's on our side. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God for the what? So that's all from God. That's all from God, but God isn't doing it. No. If God fought, the world would end. Since he, hey man, see somebody is still not with me. He may fight with us and through us, but he himself does not have to fight anyone or anything. Exodus 15 and 7, and in the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast over, uh, overthrown them that rose up against thee. Listen to this. Thou sentest forth thy wrath which consume them as what? If God fights, everything is ashes, stubble. But even in this passage, they're talking about God using them to fight and crediting him with their victories. Amen. You didn't see Jesus when he came. He didn't fight nobody. He had to allow them to crucify him. He could have called on a legion of angels and we'd have a different Bible. <laughs> well, you better look at somebody and say, you better get God right. Understand who you're talking to when you pray. To suggest that God has to fight the devil would mean that he's not God of all creation. The devil is a created being. God doesn't fight a created being as a creator. <laughs> no harm can come to God, therefore there is no real battle against him. How can creation harm a being that's not created? <laughs> Think about it. You can't harm a being that hasn't been created. It's, yeah, it's deep. Yeah, you're going to have to think now. No harm can come to God. Therefore, there is no real battle against him. The devil tries to harm God by harming us. But he knows God created him. You think the devil don't know he's created? <laughs> 
<laughs> the Bible tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? And against what? And against what? Against what? So this is all the devil. But he's not doing this to God. Remember, God is the one that made them all where they are. Kicked them out. That was easy. There wasn't no fight. And that, we're still not talking about God. We're talking about Michael. He can't handle Michael? You think he can handle God? Look at somebody say, he's bigger than that. Man, he's bigger than that. You know, the most powerful passage in the Bible is this. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That means anything within that can't fight him. He made it all. God wins every battle just because he created everything. That's like your Lego set rising up against you. <laughs> Sir, business just took over with the crackle and just glued your whole house shut. You finally, that's your Lego set. You kick it and just knock it down. I don't like it no more. Pow, it's gone. <laughs> I'm just trying to use terminology that you can understand. Amen. Everybody has Legos. Amen. So don't ever think we should fear the devil or take seriously what he said in Isaiah 14 and 11. It was bogus. Yeah, you, yeah, you, can, you can say that. What the devil said in Isaiah 14, 11, I shall be like the most high. That's bogus. You can't be if you can't create. I'm sorry, Satan, but you can't be a creator. You can't be a creator. You can't e equal yourself. You're not equivalent. The enemy has already lost just because he's not the creator. If you're not the creator, you lost already. Now the passage right after he said he was going to lift himself up and be like the most high, sit at the sides of the north, all of that stuff. This says, no, Isaiah 14 15 just checks him real good. It says, no, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Why? Because you're not the creator. You're not going to sit at the sides of the creator. You're going to sit on the side of the pit, the lowest place possible. The lowest, darkest dimension is where you're going to reside. Because you didn't, you didn't make it. Jesus came to earth in human form to teach us how to fight in our humanness. So he held back his power, became flesh to come and give us an example of living free from sin. You know, the best example, I always tell you, I've said this numerous times, but this is the best example ever of an ant just walking and there's danger on the other end, an ant eater just at the, at the end of this trail and you're trying to warn this ant, don't go up there, you're going to get sucked up by the nose of this aardvark. But the ant's going to keep going. He doesn't know. So you put a stick in front of him. What does he do? He climbs over it. You put a rock in front of him, what does he do? He goes around it, and he keeps going. The only way to communicate with that ant is to become an ant. You become an ant, then you can get down and say, look, there's an aardvark. Turn around. However they talk. I don't know. I try to talk like an ant. You know. But you got to tell the ant, you got to become an ant to warn the ant. And that's what God did. 
He sent Jacob. He sent Israel. He sent Moses. He tried to use all of them, but they kept going in the wrong direction. So God said, you know, there's only one way to communicate effectively with them. I have to become one of them to come down and teach them. Not only teach them, but I have to, they still not going to get it, J. Brian. So I'm going to have to die for them and use my blood to pay the penalty of their sins. So he came in, the, in human form to teach us how to fight in our humanness. Because man relinquished his dominion to the devil in the garden, it gave the devil the right to parade around and believe that he has authority here. But he really doesn't have authority here. Really, the only authority he has is in the yard of your tongue. If he needs us for authority, because he doesn't have it, it was given to man. Man became, the Bible said, the authority in the earth. We're the ones with dominion. So in order to get our dominion, he has to get us to say it. Because death and life are in the power of the what? Of the tongue. So he needed to say the wrong thing. Oh, don't let me go back to the truth behind hip-hop days. He's going to make you sing the wrong thing. But he needs you to say it. It needs you to enunciate it, to give him the authority because God didn't give it to him. As a matter of fact, God took it from him and gave it to you. That's why he showed up in the garden. Hey. So he's parading around thinking that he has it, but he really doesn't. 1 John 3 and 8, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil did what? Sin it from the beginning. But for this purpose, the Son of God was what? Manifest that he might do what? There you go. So he came down to destroy the works of the devil. But he knew he'd only be here 33 years, so he wanted to train you and teach you how to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. Can I keep going? This is good to me. Jesus came and took that authority away from the devil and gave us the power to put him in his place again. We have the power to put him in his place. Sure, we have to fight in the earth because of what Adam did. Adam unleashed all this stuff, but we're fighting on the side that always wins. We're fighting on the side of the one that created everything. You know, that's a you-can't-lose fight. <laughs> Luke 10 and 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents. I sounded like my daddy, didn't I? Tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Oh, my goodness. How much is all? How much is all? You think the Bible made a mistake? Meant to say some? Think about this. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by what any means hurt you. God's people will always win. Earth, oh if, oh, if you don't learn anything else, you got to learn this part. Earth is not a contest of Satan versus God. I know that was supposed to have been capitalized, but I just couldn't capitalize his name. I'm sorry. I just, I can't, I, I can't. Just out of respect for the name after. I can't capitalize his name. I'm sorry. I know that's grammar, whatever. I think I went in and changed it, Evelyn. I'm sorry. I, when I was reading it, I was like, nah. Earth is not a contest of Satan versus God, but it is Satan versus man. 
So when this is not Satan versus God to see who's going to win, think about what I just said. It's Satan versus man because man gave him something that belonged to man. And so the war is us getting it back. But God is, it's not Satan versus God. Are you kidding me? God helps us, but he himself is not fighting against the devil. Who understand? We can't make God less than he is without blaspheming against who he is. If you make him less than he is, you're blaspheming. And you won't receive anything from him because he said you must first believe that he is who he says he is. And he says he's God of everything. To put him against the devil in a battle means he has to fight. If he has to fight to win, then he is not God. A creator does not battle with his creation. So the devil's bragging, saying, I'm going to raise my stars equal to God's stars, and I'm going to raise my power, and I'm going to sit in the side of the north. I'm going to equate myself with God. You think he's talking about in heaven? He going to do that in heaven? He couldn't even stay up there. I'm trying to figure. So he, he couldn't have been talking about heaven because he got like my daddy say kicked out of there so where is he talking about Job 1 and 7 and the Lord said unto Satan where comest thou Satan then Satan reminded him I don't have nowhere to go because the creator of all things the creator of everything. Satan didn't say, why are you asking me that? Come on, put him up. No, 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 no. Where you going, devil? I don't have nowhere to go. Because you're not a created being. I'm a created being. I can't beat you. This is, this is what this whole thing means. I've read it wrong all along. Going to and fro in the earth from walking up and down in it. He has no Where's the fight? I thought you was going to lift yourself up, equate your, lift your stop. Where is your throat? Where is the right? I'm going to be equivalent to the side, the sides of the north. Where is all that? Where is all that you said you were going to? Yeah. He just told you his capabilities. He just showed you how capable he is in taking on a creator. Where are you coming from, Satan? You know, God is being funny. He know where he's coming from. Remember I said God never forgets. He always remembered. He always remembers. So he's like, what you doing today, Satan? Same thing I do every day. <laughs> The brain. <laughs> I'm walking to and fro with nowhere to go. I wish they had kept talking. Why, why, why you don't have nowhere to go, Satan? Because you kicked me out. But I thought you were going to be like the most high. Now you're most low. What happened to all of that? Talking. <laughs> God.
God is God of all things. Look at somebody say, he's God of all things. How much is all? He's God of all. If God had to fight to prove his sovereignty, it would mean he is not sovereign at all. His sovereignty means he don't fight for it because he's sovereign. God is also self-sufficient. He's everything he needs within himself. If he was to need anything else, he's not God. He does not need to be defended nor defend himself against anything. Before him, there was nothing, so what can contend against it? If it could contend against them, it wouldn't have needed to be created. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but because he created everything, nothing can contend. You have all power over everything if you made everything. Before him, there was nothing. So what can contend against it? A God that has to defend himself is a God that is not sufficient in himself. He's completely sufficient in himself. He didn't need the earth. He didn't need nothing. He decided to make it because he's God. And he can do that. Job 38 and 4. When Job was complaining and acting like he thought he knew why God allowed his trials to come and all of that, God had to just back, wait, wait a minute, Job. Now, wait a minute. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Think about that. Lay the foundation of the earth. Watch how you talk to me. Watch how you consider the one that laid the foundation of the earth. If thou hast understanding, I mean, if you if you so smart, where were you? <laughs> Good versus evil is mankind's battle. Oh, I'm gonna really mess your head up. God said He made them both. It can't be his battle. Because everything that was made was made by him. Yeah. Oh, some people have a problem with that. Well, wait a minute now. Why would God, why is there so much pain and hurt if there is a God? Because he made man. And man likes to act up. Well, I mean, why would he allow all of this suffering and all the starving children? You know, they're saying that, but they're not thinking about no starving children. They're thinking about their own suffering. you thinking about yourself. Boy, you better shut up. I mean, why would God allow all of this bad stuff happen to people? People died and people, brother, you late on your rent again. Because that's what it is. You need rent. The starving children in Ethiopia, kids just don't even know the God by right that. Your car note. That's what that that's what we talking about. Car note. <laughs> y'all laughing because y'all have done that before too. God is so bad. Things are so terrible. Why would you let the devil just have his way? He just having his way. late on the rent. <laughs> but good versus evil is mankind's battle. Now, angelic powers and spiritual entities all fight against mankind in an attempt to harm God. So they can't harm God, so they're going to harm God's creation. They feel that taking you down takes him down. It's not a battle for God's heavenly throne. The devil saying, I'm going to get you, and that's the... I'm going to raise my stars above your stars, and I'm going to sit in the sides of the north and all of that. He wasn't talking about the throne in heaven. 
This is the throne he was talking about. It's not a battle for God's heavenly throne, but rather a battle for the throne of our lives. <laughs> That's the throne. He's going to exalt himself in your life. He's going to sit equal to God in your life. He's going to be like the most high in your life. Joshua 24 and 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in which land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to do what? Serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord, meaning the devil is not going to be able to do what he said in my life. I'm not allowing him to equate himself with my God. He knows he can't go to heaven talking this stuff. He's walking to and fro. He's been evicted forever. The closest he's going to ever get to the Son of God again is when the Son of God comes and throws him and his people in him. Jesus ain't coming back to fight. They setting up to fight. They are going to set up for a war, but it's, the Bible tells you it's not going to be a war. When Jesus' foot hits the mountain, the battle is over. So, who you going to serve? A battle in which evil attempts to overthrow God would mean that something created God. Nothing is greater than the creator of all things. If there was another being equal to God, he would have to be a creator himself, and two creators cannot coexist without eventually opposing one another. God sovereignly reigns as the only creator and is the only true and what? Living God. Nehemiah says, thou, even thou, O Lord alone, thou hast made heaven and the heaven of heavens. Lord have mercy. Listen to what Ezra said in this passage. Thou, even thou, you are Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven the heaven of heavens. You didn't just make heaven. You made the heaven of heavens. With all their host. The earth and all things that are therein. The seas and all that is therein. And thou preserve them all. And the host of heaven worship thee. Look at somebody and say he's a great God. Summary. Oh my goodness this was good. Though there, it's a long summary too, it's two pages, but it's worth it. There, though there is contention on earth against God, earth still belongs to God. So let's don't get it twisted talking about the elite, the billionaires, and what their plan is for this pandemic, and how this is all just practice for the mark of the beast, and they're going to do this and that, and they're going to do this. And Remember, earth still belongs to God. <laughs> He's the creator of it. So anything they're doing is still under that power. Somebody sent me a video of, you know, I've been getting UFO videos all week. I mean, and they are here and real. They've landed in places, everything. Everything, y'all. This is going down. It's already happened. They're here. They are here. Look at somebody say, no, I'm not going to make you do that. Look at somebody say, they're here. <laughs> No, Pastor, no, I'm not saying that. <laughs> they, they're here. They're here. But I, man, I don't care how big the spaceship is. You know, that's the one thing they never do in sci-fi movies. They never do it in sci-fi movies. They never do it in alien movies, nothing. Call on the name of Jesus. I would love to see that. What would have happened to E.T.? 
if a Holy Ghost preacher had walked in the room. What you got hiding in that basket? Let me see what that is. Oh, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I'm the only one. When I'm seeing it, I'm just wondering why ain't nobody rebuking the devil, the clown in the sewer. That would have been the first thing. It floats down here. Oh, but there's glory up here. No, oh, you better get your temper. You better, you better get, get your scary looking self, man. I just wonder why, why nobody call on it. Because you know that's, that's a reflex for me. If I see a clown in the sewer, Doc, it's a reflex. Oh, Yatsha. In Jesus' name. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. That's why aliens ain't going nowhere near Christians. Holy Ghost believers, you ain't got to ever worry about a grave showing up at your house or a reptilian talking to you. They're not going to do that. Your power will make them tell everything. Yeah, that's what the power of God did with the devil. That's what that whole conversation was about. That conversation didn't even have to be in the Bible. That didn't even have to be a conversation. The conversation is there so you'll know how the devil operates. Uh, I need permission to mess with Job because I can't mess with him without your permission because you're greater than me because you made me. That's what that conversation was. It was for, look at somebody say it was for your benefit. So ain't no alien crossing a Christian. They're going to tell too much, Elder. So though there is contention on earth against God, earth still belongs to God. He's going to eventually destroy earth because it is his to end. Given the fact that he began it. That's sovereignty. When he's ready, it's over. Why? Because he started it. The, the referee, when you're on a, in a track meet, when he clicks the watch, he started it. So your watch don't count, and no other stopwatch in there counts. He started it, and when he's ready for it to be over, that's God. He started this. So when he's ready, it's over. Before God destroys it, he's going to save those that he loves. <laughs> he's going to save those that have lived for him and fought for him. He's going to save those that have stood for his truth. He's going to raise from the dead those that loved him. He's going to lift all of us into the air to meet his beloved son. God is God of what? Watch what he does. Watch what he does. There is no question that we serve the true and living God and that we will win in the end. In order to truly understand this, listen. God must be the same God in our minds that he is in the universe. 
In order for you to understand what I'm saying, he has to be the awesome power, the same God in our minds that he is in the universe. If we belittle him by comparing him to false gods or false deities, then we become idolaters and his power is no longer sufficient for us. If we compare him to man and think that he thinks like us, or we believe that we're little gods like him, we sell him short and his powers are not sufficient to save us because we definitely can't save ourselves or keep our thoughts in our own control. <laughs> yeah, everybody that's saying, I'm a god, I'm a god, I'm a god. Man, look at your life. You're the worst god ever. <laughs> Bruh, why the ones that call themselves God so messed up? Dude, you can't sleep without getting high. You can't sleep without getting drunk. Your life is ruined. You are God. Calling each other king and queen. Y'all the worst kings and queens ever. You're the queen of trash. You're the king of nothing. Bruh, what do you rule over, king? You don't even rule over your own behavior. He is God of all gods. <laughs> Look at somebody say, he's God of all gods. Creator of all things, above all things, above all things in the earth, above the earth, and above all in the universe. Because he has created everything, we have to view him as being uncreated. Now think, view him as being uncreated with no beginning. There's no beginning to a being that's uncreated. Let me help you think. Let me help you. There's no time there. Time would suggest that he has aged. And he's the ancient of days. Ageless. Time would put a human moniker on him where you could measure him. But he's un immeasurable. Because there's no time. You can't put him to time because time is in him. He controls time. An uncreated being is above all created things. That just makes sense, doesn't it? He's uncreated. He's above everything that was created. Man has some attributes of God, but God has no attributes of man. None. God is nothing like us. He's nothing like you. He made you in his image and likeness, so you have some attributes, but he's nothing like you. God was first and not created, so when Jesus came, he came down in the form of man, though he was God. He was an example for man. He was an example of perfect humanity. He was here to show us how we should live as humans, not as gods. Because we can't live as gods, because we're not gods, because we ain't created anything. Well, I made a baby. God made the baby. I made a baby. I'm a, you got to worship the womb of the black woman because we had the children and the womb is sacred. And you didn't do that. Get, give me a piece of paper and write down what happened. I had a baby. It came out and other stuff. And then it was here and cried. It cried and I have it now. See? It's sacred. You don't know what happened because you didn't do it. God did that. And scientists are still trying to understand what God does. God was first and not created. So when Jesus came, he came down in the form of man, though he was God. 
He was an example for man. He was an example for perfect humanity. He was here to show us how we should live as humans, not as gods. We are not gods. We are created beings and not deities. We are nothing. Nothing. And we can't lift ourselves up to be something. I don't care how many likes and views and comments you feel you have on the internet. You're still nothing. At the end of all them views and likes is you. And folk will like anything. Oh my God. They like, I, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm shocked at some folks. You like that? <laughs> Just depending on what time of day it is. <laughs> but you like that? That's foolishness. Why you like that? Because I was mad at the person that they was talking about. So I like. We are nothing and we can't lift ourselves to be something. As humans, we are fighting against the evil in the earth so that God can be shown sitting on the thrones of our lives. Then when he returns for us, all evil will be obliterated and we will reign with his greatness. How long? Forever. Amen. The devil wants you to reign with him. Colossians 1 and 16. For by him we, well, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and what? And he is before all things, and by him all things, what? Consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. The church. The church. Why are they closing the church? Why is the new message for 2020, you don't need the church? You don't need a pastor? You don't need to follow no man. Why? Because Colossians 1 and 18 says that he is the head of the body, the what? Church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Are y'all listening to the greatness of this? And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he what? He fixed you so that he could sit on the throne of your life. You were messed up. He just said it. You were messed up. You were alienated. You were enemies in your mind by wicked works. That's all of us. But yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable. Where? In his sight. Everyone stand to your feet. The greatness of God, the greatness of our creator. Our minds can't fathom it, but our lives have to practice it. We have to reverence the awesome power of God. Do you know if you put God in the right place of your life, you won't struggle with sinning? If you keep him in the right place in your life, you will live better. You'll want and desire to align with his truth if you keep him in his rightful place. He is God. Amen?
Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, in reverence to your greatness, in reverence to your glory and your honor, who you are, God of the universe. And though you understand us because you made us, and though you incline your ear to hear us, and though you communicate with us and speak to us, and though you love us and care for us as a good father, you are God of the universe. So we reverence you. We put you there because only a God that is uncreated and God of everything can save us in the end. So we put you there right now. Forgive us, Lord, for belittling you, for thinking you to be a man, for thinking you to be like a man, for thinking ourselves to be great, for thinking ourselves to be like gods for, or like you, for raising the level of an idol or a thing that we want or something that we desire, raising it up to the importance of you. Father God, forgive us. We repent right now because we must realize that you are God of everything and there is nothing made that you didn't make. So we thank you, Lord, for this message to put us in our place and help us to keep you in your place. And we give you glory and reverence from this day forward of who you really are. In Jesus' name, amen.